Abandoned for centuries, bang in the middle of vast desert expanse of Rajasthan, Kuldhara was sinking deeper into the ground, probably being eaten by darkness as the sun went down and almost touched the sand beneath. There is complete silence, which is disrupted only by a stray gust of wind whirling dust. The villagers never came here after dark. Tales had been told, whispers through generations, of a curse so potent it made them run in the dark of night, leaving everything they ever possessed behind. It wasn't the disappearance that kept them away, though. It was what happened afterward. The village was said to be haunted, not from spirits of the dead which would have been bad enough, but from something far more ancient, far more malevolent. No one had dared to stay beyond sundown for years. Desert winds hauled strange noises down the abandoned streets of cooled horror voices, some claimed. People who chanced near the ruins spoke about feeling watched at every turn by eyes no one could see. The stories whispered about the village of Kuldhara were endless, yet to Arun and his friends, it was just another ghost story. Such places beckoned students of history from a university nearby in, not out of fear, but because of the thrill of unraveling the truth that lay beyond the myths. Of course, Arun, Mira, and Raghav had heard all the warnings. The stories of villagers who vanished overnight, thereby leaving their homes to stand, untouched for centuries, were good enough. But the talk of a curse? Of voices echoing down the empty streets? They were cynics at heart. I don't believe in ghosts, Raghav said as he packed his camera into his bag. There's always an explanation. We'll find out the real reason they left. Of the three, Mira was most loath. She looked across to Arun now, always of the adventurous kind. I don't know, she said softly. It's not only the stories. People say they see things, feel things. A faint smile on Arun's face reflected, but his eyes betrayed definite uncertainty. We have come this far, Mira. What's the worst that could happen? We shall go before sunset, take some snaps, and head back. Nothing to worry about. Thus, the three boarded Raghav's jeep and took off towards cooled heart of the sun, by now already well into its tardy arc downwards towards the horizon. Every moment, the topography seemed to change the land dry and barren. Long stretches of long, arid ground dotted here and there by thorny shrubs and endless dunes stretched out like a sea of golden dust. With every mile the car drove, an unearthly stillness seeped through the desert, sands birds or animals. The only things alive, it seemed, were the wind and perpetual heat. Finally, they came upon Kuldhara when the last rays of sunlight turned the village ablaze in a haunting afterglow. Crumbling stone structures stood upon first glance to be the ghosts of villagers themselves, silent, forgotten, and just waiting for something. Raghav switched off the engine. No one moved or said a word for some time. Ahead of them, the village seemed to slumber, save the fact that the houses appeared to be stuck in some time warp. Really, anyone would know why people would believe in the malediction since something about the place felt dot off. First out of the jeep, Arun swung his rucksack as if he would shake off the unease clinging to him like limpets. Come on, he called to the others. We got daylight left. Mira and Raghav followed, but the air felt heavier now. As they passed the weathered sign at the entrance to the village dash, cooled her. Keep out, Mira hung back. Maybe we shouldn't. It's just a sign. Arun cut in and gave him an assuring grin. Nothing is going to happen, but even he could not gainsay the strange feeling creeping up his spine. It was as if the very moment they stepped across and into the village, the air went unnaturally still, almost deadening. The old stone buildings that once housed life stood decaying now monuments to some forgotten past. The streets were in eerily perfect condition. It could be said that people just vanished in the middle of the day, leaving behind empty pots, scattered sandals, and faded cloths fluttering in the breeze. Raghav brought the camera to his eye, shot after shot of the decaying structures in his view, a mask of fascination and unease upon his face. It's like they just disappeared, he whispered, but wasn't really aware he did. It felt wrong, somehow speaking louder here. She fell behind, her fingers tracing the old stone walls, skin catching on the rough texture. 
Why didn't they take anything with them? Mira said out loud the sound carrying in the silence, with a trace of an echo. Arun, ever the leader, pressed further into the heart of the village, gesturing to follow. Maybe they fled in a hurry, he said, but to his ears, the excuse sounded lame. Something in the chronicles of Kuldhara did not quite add up. A whole village of people leaving their homes overnight? Impossible to digest. But as they walked further down the deserted alleys of the maze of streets, the unheimlich nodded to him. The sun was by now all but set, and long shadows sprang out upon the ground, distorting the apparent size and shape of everything. Arun consulted his watch. They had really promised to be away by sunset, and the village was proving larger than they had thought. We really need to get back soon, Mira suggested, trying to keep the anxious note from echoing in her voice. She hadn't wanted to come in the first place, and now every fiber of her being was screaming that they were making a mistake. Just a little more time, Arun said, looking over at Raghav, who seemed intent on framing everything through his camera. We're almost done. Something suddenly caught Mira's eye as they turned a corner. A fleeting instant, and she thought it was some trick of the fading light, then saw it again a movement, quick and fleeting, in one of those abandoned houses. A shadow, perhaps? No. It was far too deliberate. Too human. She let her breath out in a sudden rush, catching it in her throat, and fingers stumbled on Arun's arm. Did you see that? She whispered, her heart overrunning. Arun frowned. See what? There. In the window, she said, pointing across the street. I swear I saw something. Raghav watched the exchange before turning the camera towards the house. Zoomed in through the cracked window, there was only darkness inside. There's no one there, Mira, he said, lowering the camera. It's just your imagination. But Mira knew better. I'm telling you I saw something. Let's check it out, Arun said, stepping forward before either of them could protest. This one was worst of all. Walls buckling, a portion of the roof caved in. The floor inside was matted with a thick layer of dust that no one had disturbed for years except for one thing. Something odd. The second they stepped through the doorway, there it was. Footprints. Faint, but visible in the dust and clear. And certainly not ancient, either. They looked new, as if someone had just trod through. Look, I was telling you. Mira whispered, her voice shaking. Raghav dropped to his knees, staring hard at the footprints. But, who could have made them? No one has come here for centuries. A chill ran down Arun's spine. He turned to the door open behind them half expecting to see someone standing in the doorway, watching. But the doorway was empty. The village was silent. I don't like this, Mira said, backing towards the door. We need to leave. But as they turned to make their way out, a sudden gust of wind slammed the door shut behind them with a deafening bang. Dust swirled in the air, and they stood frozen for that one long moment, hearts pounding hard in their chests. Then, in the heavy silence after, they heard it a faint whisper so soft it could have been the wind. But it wasn't. The whisper grew in volume now, to a low murmur, as if dozens of voices spoke at once and just out of earshot. Mira clutched Arun's arm. What is that? She breathed, scarce above a whisper, above the growing sound. I don't know, Arun replied, his voice shaking now. Slowly, Raghav raised the camera once more toward the darkness of the house. But as he peered through his lens, the whispers stopped. And in the dead silence that followed was heard something far more terrible. A single footstep. That one step reverberated within that quiet house, oppressively quiet. The three stood petrified. Their hearts were racing against the ribs. Nobody moved, nobody breathed, staring deep into that darkened room, awaiting whatever would emerge. Arun stepped forward hesitantly and peered into the darkness. Hello, he called, his voice catching. Stupid thing to do, he knew that, but this silence was just too much to bear except for the low moan of the wind outside, and his heartbeat steady in his ears, there came no reply. Raghav lowered his camera, his face ashen. We need to get out of here. He whispered all confident, and all skeptical seemed to race just then, and feeling of dread simply grew. Now, but Arun, 
Even as fear chewed at his stomach, seemed to stay stock still. Something in this place commanded it. Something. Wrong. Deep inside, he felt the tug, the pull a feeling that the village itself was watching them, waiting. What if we're not supposed to leave, he said, rather to himself than the others. Mira's eyes went wide. What do you mean? Before Arun could reply, the room was plunged into darkness. The last streaks of the evening light vanished, smothered as by the unseen hand. In a mad scramble of fear, the group tumbled over one another to turn on their flashlights the beams cut through the strangling black. But the light brought no comfort to them. The thin beams of their flashlights, the only light battering upon the walls, seemed only to close in upon them. The shadows closed in. Then, from the corner of the room, they saw a figure, indistinct at first, standing motionless in the furthest shadow. It was a woman or at least what passed for one. Clad in tattered, ancient cloth, her form flickered in and out of existence, like some mirage. Her head was bowed, long hair hanging like a curtain over her face, and her hands hung limply at her sides. Frozen in fear, they stared on for a while, till finally Raghav found the courage to whisper, We need to go. Now! But before they could do so, the figure raised her head, and there was a face contorted in grotesque agony, eyes as dark voids with nothingness staring back, and she opened her mouth to scream, and nothing came forth but a hollow scream that seemed to rip the air asunder. Then, suddenly, the walls started to shudder, and dust rained from the ceiling. The earth beneath them seemed to shift, as if this whole village heaved itself from some millennia-dead sleep. Whispers that had been faint and far world around them now. A cacophony of voices rising and falling in maddening rhythm. Mira shrieked and tugged a rune toward the door. We gotta get out of here. They stumbled backwards through the dark, thin streets of Kuldhara. It seemed as though the darkness closed in from every direction. Every corner, every shadow seemed to writhe around them moving as if the village itself was a living, breathing thing watching and waiting to claim them. The houses they had passed now loomed like sentinels, their windows black and hollow. The last one running, Raghav stopped and turned into the direction they were running from. His breath clutched in his throat for indeed the figure was a woman and was after them her form floating eerily above the ground, closer with every heartbeat. She's behind us, he shouted out, his voice breaking with fear. Arun caught her hand and they ran faster footsteps resounding through deserted streets. The endless village, every turn taking them deeper inside the labyrinthine streets of the village. It seemed as if itself the village refused to let them go. Then, round a bend, there it was, a huge temple, weathered and decaying, its spire reaching up like a splinter of bone towards the night sky. The entrance yawned open, a gaping cave of darkness, but it was the only way forward. Arun knew, in part of his mind, that something was not right about the temple, that it was a place in which they really should not go. But they had no option. In there, he yelled, pulling the rest through the entrance. They stumbled inside. The flashes of their flashlights danced across the floor as they beamed into the huge dark area. The temple was ages older than the rest of the village. Its walls carved with symbols and faces that in the flickering light seemed to twist and writhe. Why are we here? Mira gasped, her chest heaving as if in a desperate attempt to struggle for breath. Her eyes flew around the room in fear as her throat clutched. Arun knew not how to answer that. But the deeper inside the temple they went, the chillier a realization overcame him. This place, it was the source of the curse. He could feel it in the air, the weight of something ancient and powerful, something that had waited for them. Then suddenly, Raghav's camera whirred to life, the flash going off repeatedly. What the hell is happening? He muttered, fumbling with the buttons. But as the camera flashed, it showed something on the walls in the form of writing. Faint, yet unmistakable, carved deep into the stone, the words were in a language none of them could understand. But the meaning was clear. We will never leave, because before they could get a word out, the temperature just plummeted. Their breath fogged before them, and the whispers returned louder, clearer now. 
A voice unmistakably human swept through the chamber. You shouldn't have come. They whirled as one, their flashlights darting around the room. But nobody was there. Then from the darkness again, the figure emerged, this time the woman, her hollow eyes fixed on them, mouth twisting into a ghastly grin. You have seen too much, she whispered. The ground around them began to shudder, a deafening roar of shattering brick and concrete, the temple itself splintering. The curse of Kuldhara, which had lain dormant for centuries, was slowly coming awake. And now, Arun thought with growing horror, they were a part of it. Louder, the walls of the ancient temple groaned. Sheets of dust tumbled down as stone cracked and splintered while the earth bucked beneath them in twitching violets. Murmurs that had so recently been still roared now in their ears like the wailing of the dead. Every instinct in them was screaming to run, but there was nowhere left to go. Arun's heart was racing, looking frantically around the room for some means of escape. The opening through which they had come was sealed now, with crumbling debris. They were trapped. We gotta get out, he exclaimed springing from Mira and Raghav, dragging them with him toward the far end of the temple. The crazy swings of his flashlight sent erratic beams shooting through the place so that the shadows twisted and lurched. And then of course, there was this figure the woman who kept watching them with that twisted hollow smile, her form growing more solid, more real with every second. We cannot stay here, Mira cried, panic choking her words. Her hands shook, clutched on a rune, eyes wide with terror. Over there, Raghav pointed at the back of the chamber where a narrow passage led deeper inside the temple. Of course, it wasn't an escape, but it was their only option. They immediately ran to the passage without thinking. Their footsteps were loudly rattling within the collapsing temple. The walls shook incessantly, crackling set on across the stone-like veins of some dying monster. Louder then, the whispering followed them angrier, most desperate voices of the cursed villagers. The air was thick and stifling, promising to choke them as they fell down the passageway. The weight of the curse weighed oppressively on them, and every breath would burn his lungs. Mira was falling behind, the shaking of her legs refusing to be stilled. Yet they could not afford to stop. Behind them, the figure floated closer, her empty eyes never off them. Now lucid, her voice tore above the cacophony of whispers. You shouldn't have come, she said, enunciating words heavier with more ancient malice. Raga spun around to a pale countenance. What does she want? Why doesn't she leave us alone? She's not the only one, said Arun, deadpan serious. The whole village it's cursed. She's part of it, but there is something worse out there, something keeping her here. They entered at the far end into a small, circular chamber. The walls lined with crumbling stone idols. Their eyes carved deep into the rock, stared down at the group with unnerving intensity. In the very center of the room was a stone altar, cracked and weathered with age, yet there was something about it that just felt wrong, very wrong. This is it. Arun breathed, his voice barely audible. This is where the curse began. Mira reeled forward, her breathing in ragged gasps. What are you talking about? What do we do? Arun went to the altar, his hands extended to touch cold stone shaking. They didn't just leave, the villagers were forced out. She did it, the curse did. Yet still something held them here. Something powerful, something evil. Scarcely had he thus spoken when the earth around the altar began to chafe and tear asunder. A chasm in the floor, with rumbling sound, and a noisome, cold blast swept up from beneath, poisoning the air with deathly fume. And from this abyss, they might hear the noises of movement laborious, ponderous steps, as of something long and chain stirring. We have to destroy it, Arun said forcefully. This altar this is the source. We need to break it. That look of horror had left Raghav's eyes wide. How are we even sure that'll work? We aren't, replied Arun, picking up a loose stone from the floor. But we have no choice. The instant Arun raised the stone, ready to drop it onto the altar, a deafening scream tore through the chamber and rooted him to where he was. 
This time, she was standing in the door of the chamber, but she was not alone. Behind her, the shadows twisted and writhed, taking shape in a multitude of figures whose faces were haggard and empty, whose forms were robed in tatters like herself. Those villagers said to be accursed had returned to Kuldhara. You can't stop it, the woman breathed, words that were echoed off of the stone walls of the chamber. You can't break what's been bound in blood. Arun hesitated, his clutch on the stone tightening. The figures closed in now, their empty eyes fixed on the group, their mouths open in some silent chant. We have to do something, Mira cried, her back to the wall as her eyes ran between the figures closing in and the altar. Arun's mind was racing, and there had to be something that he wasn't seeing, and suddenly, it clicked. The writing they had seen some time ago, etched into the walls, was, We will never leave. And in themselves, the words were a forlorn prophecy it wasn't said, but it was a warning to anyone that may not believe it. They're trapped here, Arun muttered, eyes wide with realization. They can't leave because they are bound to this place. If we destroy the altar, we don't just break the curse we release them. Raghav had gone pale, but he nodded. Then do it. Arun swung the stone again, and with a second shriek, the woman flung the figures forward, their distended shapes reaching out with scrawny hands. Time seemed to freeze as Arun swung the stone down into the altar with full strength, and it shattered into a loud crash. The effect was immediate. The chill air shockwave ripped through the room, the blasted villagers thrown backward into darkness, screams peeling out into the woman's shrill shriek, her body suddenly starting to dissolve smoke unraveling in the wind. All was still for a moment. Then the whispers broke apart, the shaking of the walls subsided, and the earth beneath them stopped its trembling. The oppressive weight that had lain upon the village was gone. It is done, Arun breathed, laying the stone down, his body shuddering with exhaustion. But as they turned to make their way from the chamber, out of the darkness came one last whisper soft, almost sorrowful. They poured out of the temple into the cool night, with the stars twinkling above them. And Kuldhara was silent again, the village slipping into its eternal sleep. But deep inside them, all three knew that something had changed, and finally the curse was rent asunder. As they came out into the outskirts of the village, Arun turned to look back. The streets were empty, the houses mute. But far off, near the temple gate, he saw, or thought he saw a figure a woman with her expressionless face uplifted towards them, as it were watching them take their direction. Mira spoke for the first time. You don't really believe it's done with, do you? Arun didn't say anything for a minute. I hope so, he whispered. But some things, they never really end. With that, they turned and began to trudge away from Kuldhara, the village receding into darkness behind them. The curse was broken, but its memory, its tale, would persist, a story to be murmured by wind down the deserted streets of Ghost Village, till it was time to tell it again.